Good night, everybody. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. I say, I'm here with an elder of the community tonight. Okay, is this thing saying? Sound check. Okay, sound on now. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Good night. I say. I'm here with an elder tonight from the community, Mark, and he'll be chiming in at some point. Welcome, everybody. We have a lot of things to go through tonight and I'm hoping that the I'm hoping that at the end of tonight collectively we come away feeling a lot more informed a lot more aware So I'm just giving it a couple minutes until others join in and then we begin, okay? Thank you so much for joining. Welcome all the Maroons all over the world. Welcome to everyone, the wider public. Welcome to everyone who has been paying attention to what's been going on. We remain transparent. We remain above board. We remain in the light of the people in doing what we're doing. And I hope that at the end of tonight, you feel more compelled to help us to, to get the right thing done, to have dialogue going and to prevent things from even further escalating. As we have been watching, things have escalated quite significantly and quite drastically in the last few days. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Just giving the others a few more minutes to join and then we get started. Please, everyone, share as much as you can before we get started. Uh, it's a critical time that we face as Maroons. And we're here in this community. We stand for doing what's right. And we remain transparent to everyone out there uh, in our mission. And a lot of things have been swirling around recently from um, incidents that have happened here in a compound. Uh, I see, are you hearing me? Yes, we're hearing you. Okay, so today I would have went through a lot of information in enlightening you on some of the findings and some of the issues um, that have spiraled out of control right now, to be honest. Um, the way things are moving in the media and the things that are being said, quite callous, quite ludicrous, to be honest right and has taken away so much attention from the good things that the good people who have sacrificed so much to be here with us today right to be realizing right our true inherited potential potential right that i think everyone can admit by now something is not right something is off people think that you know um Chief Curry is acting out of capacity. Chief Curry is acting quite within capacity. The fact of the matter is Chief Curry has been blocked out. Chief Curry has been ignored. Chief Curry has been sidelined. Chief Curry has been libeled against. And it still doesn't hurt me. But what it does, it keeps wasting time and drawing energy in directions that are not fruitful. To our brothers and our sisters and they do not deserve it we do not deserve this now i would have enlightened you to the happenings um that would have been we would have uncovered in coming into office as at february in 2021 
now we came to understand that within our uh, our our community players from other other islands other countries came here got involved with our council and also participated in moving large sums of money in and out of a state account without the knowledge of the people the fact of the matter is there's so much that has been at stake since coming into office that we've realized our lands have been encroached upon in 2013 we all agreed on a cockpit country stakeholder boundary to which we expected when the announcement was made in 2017 regarding an area for, to, that, that would that would be protected quite a different territory or boundary was highlighted and then offered as what was to be declared as the cockpit country protected area we later understood that the, 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 the changes or the alterations to these boundary markers was as a result of commitments and contracts that were made to external bauxite companies who have since many begun operations, many would have already um, you know, made certain commitments that are now almost irreversible, right? Our government, 51% shareholder, right, of this entity, right, would have gone and permitted mining on what was demarcated as cockpit country. Mind you, cockpit country provides 40% of the island's fresh water supply. And when you damage the water system, when you damage the aquifers, when you remove the topsoil, when you extract these minerals, you cause irreplaceable damage. Irreversible, irreplaceable. No amount of money can compensate for what we lose as a people when we literally ship our entire soil off to another country. Now, when we spoke in the early days about this Maroon Treaty and what it means in today's language, in today's literature, we've been hit with many rebuttals. We've been hit with many uh, I would say offensive rebuttals and the fact of the matter is since coming into office I've been seeking dialogue with the government to bring to rest long-standing issues as it relates to maroon rights, maroon land and maroon identity. The challenge is we failed at having a diplomatic or any form of conversation whatsoever but what we do know is that in law, we have a legally binding agreement that is still standing that we reserve the right to invoke, which is what I've merely done. International law is different from local law. Local law requires certain adaptations to bring international law into effect. My arguments have been, let's get to what this treaty means today. We've had to use sovereignty to preserve our land and our rights to that land. Because if we were to engage in dialogue regarding indigenous rights and giving away what we know we have legally, then come 10 years time when we are out of minerals in the area that would have now been demarcated as cockpit country, we then change the, 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 the boundary to access more minerals and more minerals. Then where does it stop? We reserve that right. We also reserve the right to seek and to compel the government to come to the table to bring this issue to amicable end. It is hurting everybody. It is hurting the good people of this island. It is hurting the good Maroon people who have suffered enough. Now that our land is at threat, let me tell you something. They say the Maroons are divided, you see? The Maroons are divided. Yes, the Maroons are divided to a certain extent because we've allowed ourselves to be divided. I would want to drop the term maroon 
the indigenous people of Jamaica are divided because of wedges that have been stuck in between them. This document provides refuge, provides a haven, provides the safety for you who were identified as First Peoples when the British was signing that document. So let's cut away all the unnecessary nonsense. The Maroons gave refuge to all those who sought refuge. All those who had... All those who valued freedom. All those who valued justice. All those who knew that they were children of the earth. They resisted the enslavement. Enslavement from the mentality. Enslavement from the physical. All of us came together in the enclaves of the cockpits all the way back to the Blue and Junco Mountains. And we together, black, white, brown, obroni, and kun kun, we all stood together and defended the rights and freedom of a people. How is it today you're relying on the literature of those who lost the war? The rhetoric of those who now are in control of the estate of those who lost the war. To then feed off your bread and call it the truth. People, a lot more is beneath the surface as to which you may believe. I was not sent here for any reason under any agenda more than coming here to make life better. For the people who to this day still live, still defend, and still cherish the land as it was in 1738 and prior to 1738. We are children of the Almighty. Kinder, one family. Out of many, one people. The irregularities that we would have un we would have uncovered as it relates to the Lumi and this bank account. We also found what I would call the blueprint or the architecture of what the currency was to be backed by. There are many questions that still remain because I see information relating to bauxite companies. I see information regarding the minerals that have been identified in cockpit country. I've found ledgers showing movement of monies. I've seen names of people within my community and outside of my community receiving money from the state account. As the authority in this territory, I have requested the assistance of the external authorities to look at an account that is within their jurisdiction that to us there is a highly highly irregular set of transactions to which one must be compelled to take a look at where is the justice if you go to Western Union now, if you go collect your money, them ask you everything. Maybe even how you reach at the Western Union location. If you go to the bank to draw your own money, you have to tell them what you're going to do with that money. Why was there no accountability where two, almost one million US dollars was moving through our account? I'm talking daily transactions, thousands and thousands of dollars moving through our account. I took this to the highest level of... Listen, I carried this to the highest level of organized criminal investigative authority in the land. As an authority, to an authority, seeking the assistance that... The relationship which I speak of that exists is quite informal. 
This is why there are so many gray lines, people, because nobody has put pen to paper on officially understanding and recognizing indigenous rights. So we're suffering because of that. People come into this territory, commit crimes, and go away untouched, unscathed. They obviously know something we don't know. They obviously know how to maneuver certain lines we don't know. Or perhaps they're affiliates and conduits otherwise that we just can't see. But what we do see is hard evidence. Hard irrefutable evidence. And to add on top of that, having accessed the building last week, Mr. McPherson reached out to us. He reached out to us and called me. I got four calls from him Saturday night, five calls from him Sunday. This was all after accessing the building. Mind you, he has not been in Jamaica for almost two years. No one has heard or seen from him. He made himself available to come and see me. I accepted having him here. I invited him here actually because we've had a long, long wait to get answers to these long-standing questions that are still driving a divide in our community as former Colonel Ferran Williams is claiming ownership to this building. Mr. McPherson has provided information contrary to that assertion. Mr. McPherson came here on Monday of this week, just ended. He came to meet with myself, but I took the liberty to invite members of the community to join us and members of the council. Clarity. We, had an, we had a gathering of over 35 persons here to witness Mr. McPherson explain to us the dealings and handlings of our state account and the entanglements he was involved with with former Colonel Williams as it relates to Lumi and the building that is saying he was it was a gift from Mr. McPherson to him and has a room for his sister. Mr. McPherson, who now goes by the the name Chief Semako the first provided information to confirm our worries, to confirm the information that we would have come by that the world's most wanted man was actually in touch and in communication with him. He, however, went on to say he did not believe it was a material impact on anything to do with the Lumi and what was construed to be his involvement in the creation of this currency. Mr. Marshalek, if you may not know or if you might not have looked him up, is wanted for the wire card scam in Germany, which approximately three billion euro dollars went missing. Let me say that again. Approximately 3 billion euros went missing in Germany from what was known as the wire card scandal. And Mr. Marshalek visited a compound after that crime was committed. We have records and interviews of people validating him visiting here. Now ask yourself, how could this have happened? How could the authorities not have known this? Why is it that the Akompong space is being used to collect money, is being used to facilitate criminal activity, but yet the people who live in it Suffer. don't even deserve the dignity of the eyes of government and people who say they care and who say we are one. 
It can't be that when I call for the assistance of the police, they choose when they want to come. Because we say we want to preserve law, we say we want to preserve order. All it means is a mere communication. A mere understanding between both entities. It exists informally. Prior to me being here, any police coming into the community would make a call to the colonel. If there's an issue, they would liaison on with the colonel. The problem is, I think there's a grave misunderstanding as to what this maroon thing means to everyone. So let me help clear it up again. In the signing of the treaty of 1738, it made recognition that there were two jurisdictions, one that was controlled by the Maroons and what was controlled by the British government. After the British government left Jamaica, they decided to give the plantation owners and their estates, the estate owners, their own independent government. The independent entity that was created here in Jamaica was then recognized Order of Council 1962 to have an independent government. Mind you, the Maroons would have maintained all aspects of their governance, their culture, their history to this date. What has not been made clear is the distinction between the Maroon jurisdiction and the Jamaica jurisdiction. Nothing that a mere understanding or memorandum of understanding or agreement can do. Because in the United States, you have what is known as Concurrent Resolution 331, which brings into force the treaty rights of the Native Indians. What this does is also bring recognition to their territory. But they still have a relationship with the federal government. Why is this so hard to understand? Why is this so hard for people to comprehend? We maintain a council that governs the space and our territory. The fact is, we've been underfunded. We've been sidelined. We've been marginalized. We've been ridiculed and we've been discriminated against in policies, in structures, in doing business. Because for one, it's never been made clear how do people do business in these territories. Because the land is not under the titles of Jamaica. So then how does security work? Then how does it work if you don't pay lands on your tax? And how do people benefit within your territory? You already have a special economic zone is what you're telling me. So how do we not benefit from this? Because legislature doesn't speak to the maroon lands. They were never a part of the crown system. Jamaica is still a member of the British colony. Your head of state is still Elizabeth, Queen. And unfortunately, as it may be for this day where we would look to have a republic a true republic can only exist when constructive dialogue begins with the two entities on this land to which an obligation was passed. Why is it so hard for brothers and sisters to now come together and make this work? Why is it so hard to find unity in the Maroon communities? Why is it there's so much intervention of state in Maroon business. I'm being interfered with again. My connection is saying poor. My connection is saying unstable. I don't know what's going on. But listen. The fact of the matter is. Without fruitful and mutual beneficial relationships, crime will continue. <laughs> Peace be upon to you. Let's take a moment right here. Let's take a reason. Let's take a rest right here. And just watch. Bring it 
Yeah. Honorable people, I thank you for taking the time out tonight to listen to me. And if I get cut off, I'll try to jump back on right away. And so I ask your patience and understanding. I was saying, when we allow these crimes to continue, when we allow our space to be invaded the way it is invaded constantly, and you have good people here who are ready and willing to work to make this great nation better, we see how the collaborative approach could be beneficial in several aspects of our daily lives. Sound there, Ben. Sound it again. Mr. McPherson confirmed that he was in dialogue with the world's most wanted man who was in a compound. Mr. McPherson confirmed that the bank account which we, which we identified, the US dollar account, which was not notified to the community nor to me or my administration by Mr. Williams was a personal account. You heard me. Mr. McPherson said the account was a personal The Akompong Maroons will not be denied. righteous sit and do nothing evil prevails listen to me people I didn't come here to joke I've already gone a year and a half come five years I'll be judged on what was achieved and what was accomplished I've been constantly blocked I've brought good people here I thank Saji Bank who had, who had offered in the earlier days to build a gate, two gates actually for us, to put ATMs in our community. Shortly after, members of the community went on the air and started blasting me, blasting Saji for no reason. Turned them away. Jakana came here, wanted to look at how perhaps we could have something worked out. Understanding the knowledge that the Maroons reserve when it comes to ganja, medicine from our forests. Again, that was turned upside his head by one said Basra, who is one of main topic today. <laughs> 